<coughs> hey, what's up? Um, <laughs> I've just woken up, and I thought, hey, I might as well do do a deck profile, because why not? Um, this is a deck I've been playing quite quite a bit recently. It's done um, it's done better than I thought I would. I I didn't think it would, you know actually be good. I was just kind of looking into it because cause it's blue eyes and I wanted to see what the support was like but the deck's actually been been really good um, once I kind of got through all the like bricky stages of of testing and whatnot um, everything just kind of flows really well. It's, it's good at what it does um, which is just drop a lot of beaters that the opponent has to worry about and um I don't know you you can play it in an aggressive controlling way sometimes um given that you know you have cards removal and alternative ways removal and then you have a pseudo floodgate in spirit and everything else um, you can really, it's, it's, it's quite flexible as to the ways that you want to play things, um, so long as, you know, you aren't, you aren't bricking and you have the, the capacity to do that, so, um, <coughs> yeah, the deck's, the deck's pretty good, it's been, it's been a lot of fun, um, I don't know if alternate, alternative white, uh, dragon is coming to the TCG at all, because it was like a movie promo or something, right? Um, it's, it's very important to the deck, so when Shining Victories comes around, I don't know how good this deck will be without altern or Alternative White. Um, who, who can say, really? But um, if they do just uh, put it in some set to bring it to the TCG, the deck will, will honestly be 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 pretty good. So um, uh, I know that a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, why don't you run this? Why don't you run this? Because Blue Eyes has like a a billion cards. Um, uh, firstly, like I just wanted the deck to be as as um competitively viable as possible. So um, I wasn't really like building the deck on a casual or fun kind of basis. Um, so that eliminates a lot of a lot of things then and there. Um, and then in terms of other things, there's I mean like none of the other level ones are really good, I have to be honest. Like and the and the whole like level one sub engine with the with the feeds uh, field spell and whatnot. None of it's really that good. Um, I mean, like, yeah, it lets you put out more of this stuff, but the cards themselves aren't really great. Even even Maiden, to be honest, because, like, ov obviously there are times where Maiden will be great, but she doesn't do anything on her own. She needs specific cards in order to uh, trigger her effect, some of which are good like, when you have them with her, like Wonder Wand on a, on a Maiden is, is really good. Sage on a maiden is pretty good, but um, you know the card just isn't. <coughs> it isn't. It, it, un, un, unless you have something to trigger, it isn't doing anything. And even then, it's not. It's not amazing. So I just went with um, what what I thought were the best cards and the core essential cards in the way that they should be ran and just found a way to kind of chuck them all together so um yeah I'll just go through the list you know three blue eyes white three alternative white um i know people run two that's okay personally i think i'd i'd run five if i could it's <laughs> it's really good even though you can only summon one per turn it's it's, it's so good at what it does it's just um drop drop a 3k beat from your hand so long as you have a white in hand then you can pop a monster and opponent controls and you can use it as 
Synchro or exceeds material afterwards is, is very good. So I think that 3 is perfect. Then 2 white car. Um, you can run 1 and it would work. You can run a 3 and it would work. Um, personally, I think that 2 is the best number. Because... Um, you know, there was, there was a time where I maxed out and ran a, a Malefic Blue Eyes, I, I think, um, on the basis that you want as many Blue Eyes cards as possible, um, just so, like, because, cause, you know, you make, you make um, Dark Matter and, and have and Antiquities and whatnot, so you want to um, maximize the chances of being able to resolve those kinds of effects that involve the deck and if you draw um, your your targets then it makes those effects less powerful but a uh, drawing car isn't isn't good you don't really want to draw it um, and I think I think that with with eight blue eyes cards you have a decent enough balance from all your all your other effects um, until you get to the late game, but by by the late game you aren't going to be you know using antiquity in that way, or you'll have probably used dark matter already, and if not, then that's probably not the exceed you're going to be going into. Um, but I mean, white 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 car, I think two is two is the correct number. Um, it's it's fine to draw it with three silvers cry, because to be honest, like white white car is the thing that you want to discard off trade in the most. It isn't um, it isn't blue eyes white because blue eyes white is actually more useful in the hand than white car dragon, um, and white car dragon is also preferable as a silvers cry target a lot of the time to blue eyes white because then silvers cry becomes special summon. White card from your grave and banish a spell trap and opponent controls. Um, so, yeah, with with two, if you draw one, um, you can still resolve an antiquity to get one from the deck, which is, you know, it's a fairly consistent play that you make in this deck. If you only run one, then um, if if you do draw it, then you won't be able to do the the antiquity effect, which isn't the end of the world, but um, drawing it isn't isn't the end of the world, considering that you have three silvers cry and whatnot, um, and you can discard it in a in a plethora of ways. So, yeah, two two white car, I feel is fine. I feel I feel that all the all the numbers in terms of. Uh, how how many of each card I run is, is pretty pretty optimized just based on the amount that I've tested with alternative options. Um, so yeah, white car is is very good at what it does. Then uh, I'll do I'll do hand drafts. So yeah, so three sage with eyes of blue. This card is very good. Um, it's just the stratos. You have ten level one, so sorry eleven yeah eleven level one tuners, ten of which are light. Which includes three Valor. So, the fact that Sage can search Valor is really, really good, because um, it just means uh, you'll you'll summon normal summon at level one tuner a lot of the time anyway. Just like you know, you'll go alternative white pop something, normal summon tuner make um, spirit. So, obviously this can search things that you'll combo with in some instances like say you have a trade in and I don't know like melody or something or a cards of consonants and you want to search out one of those targets um, but it can also search Vela which is really really good um, just because it gives you some form of defense it's, it's weird to think that this deck does have defense even though I don't play any traps um, and Veil is really good in this deck in that it, it it doesn't matter if you draw it and the matchup isn't one that Veil is going to be good in because you can just summon it as a level 1 tuner and that already has a lot of synergy with the deck. So Sage being able to search out Veil is actually super, super relevant right now. It's its other effect is pretty good. Um, you, you use it every now and then. 
but um, yeah, Sage Sage is is the best one. It's the only good one in my opinion. The only good level one of of all the other level ones. Um, just because both of its effects are really powerful if you draw it on its own. Um, like the first ten times I played with the deck, I I didn't draw Sage once and. The deck just seemed super flat, and then actually, like the first time I I drew Sage, I was kind of like, oh, okay, I see, I see why this card is so important now. It does a lot of very very good things. So three Sage with blue eyes, I feel is very good. Then uh, three White Stone of Antiquity and one White Stone of Legend. So three Antiquity. Antiquity is really really good. Um, earlier you get engraved, the better. Um, it's just, it's just a plus two, <laughs> it's, it's very strong, so, um, those of you that don't know, it's during, during the end phase, if it's in the graveyard, because it was sent there this turn, you can special summon a blue eyes monster from your deck, and, uh, you can banish it from your graveyard to add one blue eyes monster from your graveyard to your hand, so, um, generally, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll ditch it, you can ditch it off ravine, you can discard it off ravine, or you can use it as a level 1 tune, you know, or you can use it with Constance. There are plenty, plenty of ways in which to get into the grave. Um, once it's in the grave, during the end phase, you'll most likely special summon White Card Dragon from the deck. And if they have a spell trap on the field, then you can banish that with the card's effect. But in, in general, White Stone is just dumb. It's, it's, it's very, very good. It's... Um, it's, it's the most important of the level 1 tuners in the deck. E even more important than Sage, which is um, saying something. Because White white Stone sets up your early game plays by getting you stuff like Car out the deck. Then after that, it sets up your mid and late game plays by... Like, you can be more reckless with your alternative White Dragons when, you know, you'll just recklessly drop them and pop something run into solemn strikes and whatnot because you have stone to just add it back um stone's really useful in that uh you can also discard say you only have one copy of like vanilla blue eyes in your hand and you have a trade in you know oh, should i do it? um if you didn't have white stone's graveyard effect you you probably wouldn't trade in because the risk of not having another vanilla blue eyes in your hand in case you needed to drop an alternative white is pretty relevant but the fact that um antiquity can add you back either of uh those two combo pieces from your grave to your hand should one of them uh uh get get discarded or killed in some way it's 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 so good honestly it's just so good um so i think i think that this is a very good shout as a, as a three off um and then one white stone of legend is is, is useful as a one off just to um you know like of, obviously you have effects that send things from dragons to grave and whatnot and you have sage that can search it so um there are there are times where you'll want to you know do the consonants trade in power or just add a blue eyes to your hand and uh white stone of legend is good for that so um yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely worth it to, to run as a one-off in this build. And then three Vela and two Max. Uh, Vela, just because it has so much synergy with the deck, as previously explained, and Max. Um, I ran three at first, uh, and it, it it isn't as good in this deck, I feel, as in other decks. Like the, the extent that Max is good right now is really dependent on the deck that you're playing. And in this deck, this is is okay. Like you just can't really afford to to double draw it. Um, you need cards to be productive in hand, and otherwise you'll break. So, I mean, it'll it'll sound dumb, but you could run one maxi and run whatever else instead. But I I felt like uh, two max three Vela was was good enough with two I wasn't gonna double draw it but I'd draw it when I wanted to um which is pretty much all the time going second so 
max max is solid but you know you could you could drop it for emptiness or something emptiness is is good in this deck so plenty of things you can make whatever decisions you want but in terms of like the core of the deck i feel that it's super good then um one called seska because it's a searchable level one tuner that you can get off ravine and ravine is really good anyway um plus i run cards of consonants so being able to uh, search a consonants target is very useful um it's it's funny actually like i i used to run three dragon shrine instead of uh Corsesca and the two ravine and ravine is better purely for the reason that it can search you a tuner if you think about um what both of them do both are essentially send two dragons to the grave but ravine does one from your hand and one from your deck while shrine does two from your deck uh, but the positive externality of being able to search a level one tuner on top of that and I guess repeated uses out of ravine but you know that's 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 really super relevant um make Corsesca worth running which is weird because Corsesca has been around for years um you could you could run a flambeau guard um to be honest that, that that wouldn't be out of place as well um because again you get value out of level one tuners just by having them be level one tuners but um uh <laughs> it would it would be somewhat relevant in that you could revive it off off as your eyes being able to revive a level one tuner to be honest the best card that they can make for this deck would be just a level one vanilla tuner with blue eyes in its name like let's just say a 300 attack 250 defense level one light dragon tuner vanilla like <laughs> little blue eyes man <laughs> we'll call it that would that would actually be very good for the deck um but unfortunately they would they would never make it that's why they put with eyes of blue and everything so yeah flam flam volgard would have some merit if you you know you'd, you'd probably say drop like no nah, you wouldn't you wouldn't drop consonants would you let's say twin twister for argument's sake you drop twin twister and maxi for a flam volgard and a dragon train it would it, it would it would probably work out but yeah i'm i'm not running that right now of course course is cool <laughs> Then um for the spells, a cards of consonants is good. You know, I I I ran three and at first I was like, wow, this is so good because um uh, at at first I found that the deck was really heavily reliant on trade in. I don't so much now, but in the beginning I was like, Oh my god, I just I just want trade in every hand I play. And that's more to do with how you play the deck and also just luck of the draw. I was I was drawing hands of like two white to car <laughs> a, a lot of the time where obviously you need trading um trading trading is, is is very good pretty much every time you have it but consonants is nice as a complement to that obviously um well you have you have five targets and they're all searchable in some way uh the the stones through sage and Corsesca through Ravine. So if you do draw consonants, you should be able to resolve it most of the time. And just being able to draw two is is um is very useful. Plus it gives you the white stone consonants trade in wombo combo <laughs> which which is pretty good. So um yeah consonants as a one off has been pretty solid. And two ravine because it is it is great. And one light beacon I light light beacon is honestly really really dumb. It's 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 a win condition. Like you just win games randomly because you'll special summon a blue eyes from your deck and it can attack six times or something like. Sorry, from from your grave and it can attack six times. It's 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 a stupid stupid card. Um, I don't know what the optimal number is to be honest. At at, at this point, is something I've been deliberating over. But for sure, it's, it's insanely powerful. The question of why I run one specifically at this point in time. Um, I, in, in my first draft of the deck, 
I ran three. <laughs> not not even realizing the the it can attack any number of times equal to the amount of blue eyes in your graveyard type of thing. Just um just on the basis that it was like a a, a premature burial that I mean, yeah, you can't have more than one active at the same time, but it, it doesn't say, like, you can only use this once per turn, so I imagine, like, you know, you drop, like, alternate white, pop something, use light beacon, get something, make an exceed, do whatever, use another light beacon, you know, that, that type of thing. Um, but the way that I ended up using it when I did play it at 3 was was just as a as a kill switch. So all my plays if I if I had the light beacon, um I just I just play kinda recklessly, just baying out all the back row I could. Um that's that's literally the reason why Heliopolis is in is in the um in the extra deck. <laughs> is is just to accommodate light beacon because you'll 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 just make Heliopolis like blow up everything. Um, light beacon GG. Uh, so it's 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 weird, but it is so so powerful. And um, from from what I've seen in terms of builds that other people are thinking of running and whatnot, like no one's even really talked about light beacon. And this, like I I I personally don't know. I know it sounds weird because because I'm only running one to be like watch out for this card, but um, honestly, this is this is it's a power spell in a in a game where not a whole lot of decks have power spells anymore. Except I mean, pen, pendulums are what they are, but in terms of of um, archetype exclusive power spells. You don't get a whole too many, and then this comes along where it's like, well, it will often just win you the game if you manage to resolve it. Um, but the reason why I run one is because, again, I I built the deck on the basis of trying to minimize brick hands, and um, light beacon. It it needs a certain setup in order to be good, and. You you aren't gonna use it in the early game a whole lot. I mean, obviously, if you um, if you like wombo into dark matter dragger or something and it just mill mill yourself and whatnot, then this can be accommodated early on. But um, uh, yeah, it 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 does sit around a little bit. Like if if your hand is bad, light light beacon isn't gonna help mitigate that. Um. So I wanted to see how the deck ran in the absence of a a clear win condition like Light Beacon is, but to be honest, I, I'll I'll probably go to a second copy j just because it is it is so dumb for what it is, and um, having multiples means that you you can just use a Light Beacon as as a as a worse Silver's Cry, you know, just get get something out of the grave and. Um, overlay with it or synchro with it rather than um, because the, the the pressure with like running one is that if you draw you think oh I have to win the game with this when that's not necessarily true I I personally don't don't feel that way when I draw cards like this but um yeah I I'll I'll probably see how a how a second one works but honestly the card the card is is, is nuts it just wins games so randomly like so so randomly so um so it'll be interesting to see how how light beacon affects things um yeah one light beacon and three silvers cry very good card <laughs> don't know what else to say really um no, that shouldn't be there um yeah one one raigeki it's just it's just power Soul Charge, Soul Charge is, is nuts, like, there are, there are a bunch of games that I won just because I drew Soul Charge, mainly, like, when I was forced to go first, um, I'm like, oh, I have to go first, and then I end up drawing Soul Charge and just a bunch of other stuff is, is, is dumb, Soul Charge is nuts in this deck, 
um, if you resolve it, you're probably going to win because you just have so many things in grave. It doesn't matter if you're losing 4k, you're making like a rank 8, a rank 9, and have a blue eye spirit dragon on the side. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a big, like, it's, 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 it's strong. Very, very strong. Then a uh, 3 Melody of Awakening Dragon, 3 Trade In, 1 Twin Twisters, and 3 Upstart Goblin, because Upstart Goblin is great. Um, I move to the extra, 2 Azurai Silver Dragon, 2 Blue Eye Spirit Dragon. Um, this should be 3. I, I, I put it to 2 just because I saw other people playing 2. I was like, oh, well, let me see if I want the 3rd. I do want the 3rd, so I'm going to cut something for this. But for now, just you know, just 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 take everything as as is, because I'm not exactly sure what I'd want to drop yet. Probably uh, Dragler one right now, but I I don't really know. It's good. Um, Cloud Castle is is, is also good. It's a, it's a wolf bark for level nines. It's very weird. Um, then Moonlight Dragon and Starter Spark. Um, uh these these are things that you al alternative things that you can get off um off spirit dragon so you're not always gonna get as your eyes um stardust spark comes up quite well i wouldn't say quite a bit but by by quite a bit i mean it does it does come up <laughs> where you'll make a stardust spark because um the spark can protect itself and then it won't die from spirits effect moonlight comes up every now and then, particularly if, if you know it's it's your turn and you just want to like clear something and make a push. Um, oddly enough, you can sack this to make this and then summon a tuner to make this, or you can you can do the same. You can sack this to make this and then use it as a as an exceed or synchro material. So it's all very weird, but yeah, pretty good. Then um, Felgrand is. It's alright, like I haven't been elated with Felgram, but it's better in a deck like this than in um I don't know, say say Monarchs or something, because but even then, 20, 2800 attack, I, I I don't know how I feel about that. So Felgram hasn't been amazing, but I I have a lot of love for Felgram, so keep it in for now. Heliopolis, just to blow stuff up. <laughs> uh, number thirty eight, because it's great. Dragluan, Dragluan is has has been good to be honest. Like it's it's um it's it's broken in like the the mirror and anything like that, obviously. But um uh, even just you know sometimes making it and you have nothing on your field and then you special summon a dragon from your hand, which would be like a blue eyes or something, and then just hit for six k. It's not it's not irrelevant. So. <sighs> Not not sure as to whether I'm gonna drop this or say this for the third spirit, but drag Dragler one has been has been pretty good actually since I've been running it. And then uh the galaxy stuff and one Phantom Fortress Entra Blathnir. This is relevant, it, it it comes up a lot. I mean a lot, like I, I, I summon this um I know every other game at, at least yeah every other game probably um i mean like you'll you'll make spirit spirit hopefully won't die i mean i don't i don't see how oh yeah it it, it could they could they could clear the spirit and the thing that you summon off the spirit but hopefully it doesn't you sack it for whatever and then cloud castle um, can get this back from the grave. If you have an Azurize on the field already or something, you make this clear something. It's it's surprisingly relevant. Um, a lot of people don't run it, and they don't run Cloud Castle as well. When both both are too good not to run, in my opinion. Um, yeah, Phantom Fortress is is very very relevant. And then the. Uh, the the side is <clears throat> it's fairly coherent. Um, it's 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 had a little bit of testing. I mean, not 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 a whole lot of people play 
play OCG matches these days, but... <clears throat> uh, I mean, everything's pretty standard. You have your your broken traps, because in a deck like this, like no one's going to keep in Twin Twisters and whatnot against you. Unless you were really weird with your Silver's Cries, you know, like, constantly saying, like... I, I don't know, you ended up just setting Twin Twisters and Silver's Cry, and they're like, oh, we must play back row when, when you don't. Um, <clears throat> emptiness is cool in that, let's say, uh, you have a uh, Spirit Dragon. If they do something to prompt you using Emptiness, you can use the Emptiness and get Stardust Spark. Then... If they have a means to kill the emptiness, and you don't want the emptiness to die, you can protect it with spark. Um, if they don't have a means to clear the emptiness, then spark can just protect itself. And then after that turn, you, you just have spark in emptiness. So, that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, that, that applies to Decree as well but <clears> this <throat> it's, it's pretty interesting that you can have a starter spark and emptiness strats in this deck um everything else i mean yes skill drain works with the deck obviously warning is just strong uh soul releases for like monarchs and the mirror um because having played both I know that Soul Release would just be blowout if, if someone resolved that. Um, like against against Monarchs, just the getting, getting rid of all the spells and traps in the grave. It's extremely relevant. <coughs> and, um, you know, if they play the Squires and whatnot, getting rid of all of them, very, very relevant. Uh, and in the, in the Blue Eyes Mirror, getting rid of all the stuff in grave, uh, the copies of blue eyes and the white stones and whatnot, again, is very, very relevant. Um, and you know, you'll, you'll play random stuff like infernoids and whatnot, where, um, where a card such as soul release will have a lot of value. So yeah, I think, I think in this hypothetical format, <laughs> soul release is, is good for what it is. Um, Chalice is, yeah, it's pretty obvious why that's there. Very popular card at the moment. Um, third max, it's quite self-explanatory. And creature swap and honest uh, are pretty interesting. Um, this both both fill a similar role of um, cards that are good if you have a monster plus it. Um, but they're, they're different depending on the matchups, like, both are probably good in the mirror, um, Honest, Honest is good against decks that can be over you, which isn't a whole lot, but there are some, uh, Creature Swap is good against, you know, just boss monsters that they'll put out, I guess, for lack of a better way of putting it. Um, but both are also good in the reverse scenario, so I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna mess around and see which is better, but both have been okay. So yeah, this is the deck. It's it's a lot better than I expected it to be. Honestly it it, it works very well. Um give it a go if you feel so inclined. Um but yeah, uh, that's that's all. So uh, like, comment, sub, or whatever, and I'll uh, see you around.